space and time become so warped inside a black hole that they reverse direction. This means that if you were to enter a black hole, the gravitational forces become significantly stronger. This tidal force would stretch your body, a phenomenon referred to as spaghettification. You would be stretched into long, thin strands as you get closer to the singularity, experiencing extreme tidal forces. Due to the intense gravitational field near a black hole, time would slow down significantly for an outside observer compared to the person falling into the black hole. At the center of a black hole lies a singularity where the laws of physics as we know them break down. It is thought to be a region of infinite density and gravitational force. Our universe is so big that it seems like nothing outside of it can exist. And now physicists are starting to think that our universe may exist inside a black hole. This may sound odd but it could actually be the best explanation of how the universe began 13 billion years ago. It's a theory that has been explored over the past few decades. To make a black hole out of the earth, you need to pack the entire thing into a volume about the size of a blueberry. Most black holes we know of, of course, are much larger than this, with masses that are billions, tens of billions of times that of the sun, and with volumes that would encompass our entire solar system. What about the observable universe? We know that the universe is expanding, but expanding into what? Nothing. Space itself is expanding. Because of the particular way that the universe expanded right at its birth, we also know that there are parts of the universe that are currently unobservable to us. They are outside of the so-called observable universe. So there are parts of the universe that are so far away that we can't see them. So the observable universe is defined as this sphere that's around you that's composed of all the stuff that has had a chance to send a light signal that you could receive. But beyond that, we have no idea how big the entire universe is. So the observable universe right now is 93 billion light years in diameter. But the entire universe, we have no clue. It could be infinite, in fact. It could be something smaller, we don't know. If you wanted to make a black hole out of the entire observable universe, you need to pack it into a sphere that's about a little larger than the current observable universe. Do we live inside an enormous black hole? It turns out that as long as the black hole is large enough, you would be okay. It would still be a one-way trip. Once you cross this event horizon, there's no way for you to go back out. But it's entirely possible that our observable universe right now exists on the interior of an enormous black hole. Black holes are more than astrophysical oddities. And this event horizon becomes a barrier, a border, this thing that's always in the distance that you can never reach. No matter how quickly you travel, you'll never be able to get to that thing. We know that black holes eat things and grow. So this horizon, think about what it means to be inside of a black hole. This, you have this point of space, this region of space that you could never get to and it's always receding from you, a horizon. But think about what it then means for you right now on Earth. If you look out into space, there is a, a horizon very, very far out, uh, away beyond which we cannot see, but we know there's stuff there but we can never possibly see, and no matter how quickly you travel, you'd never be able to get to it. That's remarkably similar to what you would experience on the inside of a black hole. It turns out that the mathematics of the interior of a black hole is almost identical to the mathematics of the exterior of the black hole. This is actually what is going on. Mathematically, it makes sense as well. Albert Einstein first predicted the existence of black holes in 1916 as a consequence of his theory of general relativity. Over the last century, scientists have indeed put Einstein's theory to the test in various ways to verify its validity and explore different situations and circumstances. One of the early tests of the general relativity was the observation of the bending of light by massive objects known as gravitational lensing. This effect has been confirmed through observations of light from distant stars passing close to massive objects like the Sun. General relativity also predicts the existence of gravitational waves ripples in the fabric of space-time caused by the acceleration of massive objects. In 2015, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory 
made the first direct detection of gravitational waves, confirming their existence and providing strong support for Einstein's theory. Observations of objects in the universe such as the behavior of stars orbiting a compact object, the accretion disks around the black holes and the study of active galactic nuclei provide evidence for the existence of black holes and their properties consistent with general relativity. General relativity forms the foundation of our current understanding of the large-scale structure and evolution of the universe. Observations of the cosmic microwave background radiation, the distribution of galaxies and the expansion of the universe has been consistent with the predictions of general relativity. These are just a few examples of how scientists have tested and confirmed aspects of general relativity over the past century. It is a testament to the robustness and accuracy of the theory in describing the gravitational interactions in our universe. We have our equations tell us what's in a black hole, but we've never tested this, just so you know. So it tells us that within a black hole, a whole new space time can open up in the future history of this universe. And for, by that reasoning, we in this universe may be the other side of a black hole that lives in somebody else's universe. One of the interesting features of general relativity is its ability to warp space-time so much that it can swap positions in time and space before the space-time metric features change. In general relativity, this metric tells us how space and time interact, and word distance implies a strong space-time concentration of matrices and warps at a particular point. As such, the metric changes what space and time mean to different observers. The black hole Big Bang theory is based on the fact that at least for certain forms of singularity, time at a singularity reaches matter entering a new universe, the starting point of that universe. Big inflated means that at some point in the past it must have been smaller. In fact, it may have been small enough to fit inside a black hole. Many, many physicists say this is the biggest question in physics because you know, the universe is, tends to disorder, that's the way it works, everything gets more and more disordered. But so the Big Bang was a uniquely highly ordered, bizarrely, very strangely highly ordered thing. This is why the universe could have gone in many directions. You know, you have to hear so the Big Bang is a quantum fluctuation. There you go, it just fluctuated and it, you know, and it came into existence in this highly ordered state. It's been getting more disordered ever since. But disorder, the measure of disorder is a measure of the probability that you will spontaneously create it. So if you're very ordered, it's very unlikely you'll create it. If you're less ordered, it gets more and more and more likely you'll do it. And that's why things get more disordered. So the universe today is less ordered than it was then. So it's far more likely that it would fluctuate into existence now than it would fluctuate into existence then. Because it's less ordered now, so it's more likely. So that means that the whole universe, with us in it, having this conversation, and everything we can see, is more likely that would fluctuate into existence than it is that the Big Bang fluctuated into existence. And, it, and it's clear, the true, because it was very highly ordered then and it's less ordered now. So you're faced with this massive problem that if you want to say it's a quantum fluctuation, the, it's overwhelmingly more likely, and I mean ridiculously, billions and billions and trillions of times more likely. If this theory is true, it means that our universe began as a tiny point of matter inside a black hole. Over time, the black hole evaporated under the influence of radiation, expanding our universe to its current size. This theory explains many mysteries about our universe. The fact that the universe is filled with so much dark energy could also explain how our universe came into being.